Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another body armor test. I love testing body armor. This is so much fun. I get to put on my lab coat. All right, what a great day for that. Okay, nice hot day, 100 degrees. And I'm going to put on a lab coat, but that's all right. I'm going to suffer so you guys can have some enjoyment here. Uh, we're going to be testing the Safe Light Defense Level 3 Frass Plate. All right, you guys might be familiar with the Frass body armor system that we've already done a full video on if you want to check it out. You'll be seeing some shots floating through from that system, but it's a full armor system that has much more coverage, gives you coverage on the sides. It's a much fuller and larger set of armor that can you know, protect more of your body. It does represent a higher cost. Uh, this does give you a little bit more affordable option to get into the Frass system. In conjunction with a hard plate, in the original FRAS system, you can actually get up to level four protection. This is a level three plate that, as you can see, quite flexible, okay? So that's the intended purpose, to be light and flexible. This is only a four pound plate. Uh, so if you're going into a situation where you wanna have concealable body armor and be able to stop, you know, like a AK pistol, AR pistol, or even, dare I say, a full length rifle, we're gonna be shooting this uh, with, with M67, um, M193, SS109 out of full length barrels. So we know that if this plate will stop these threats at the distances we're shooting it with a full length rifle, we know it'll stop a pistol threat as well. So let's go ahead and get all Roscoe uh, done up here. Uh, I've got a carrier we're gonna put this in and let's start shooting it with a few threats and uh, see if it can live up to its reputation. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna start out with M67 ball. This is Yugoslavian surplus M67 ball ammunition in this SKS here. This is a Chinese uh, State Arsenal 26 uh, military SKS with a full length barrel, okay? Uh, now, it's important to mention before we get started with our test, uh, the Oregon Ballistics Laboratory did the uh, independent NIJ certification on this uh, armor. They shot it from 50 feet. They collected the chronograph data roughly eight feet from the target to give a little bit more of a realistic expectation for what velocities are actually impacting the plate. We're going to go a little bit different than the way they tested it, and we're going to shoot it from only 10 feet away because most of your close-in threats, especially with an AK or AR pistol or something, are going to occur at close range. So we're going to uh, do it slightly different. Now, they also used a fresh plate for every individual test. Now, according to their certification standards, the, the plates were able to soak up eight rounds of each of these uh, types of threats that we're gonna throw at it. Since we only have one plate, we're gonna shoot um, each threat at the plate two times in a different area. So we're gonna shoot it six times, but with three different threats. All right, does that make sense? We're gonna go for it. M67 ball into our frass plate. Uh, this is certainly a worst case scenario. You kick in the door and there's a dude with an SKS standing there. This is not the place you want to be. I don't care what kind of armor you got. This is a bad situation. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shoot the armor two times. Ready, Chad? Okay, two impacts right where I wanted those rounds to go. Our rifle's empty. Let's go inspect, see what happened. All right, let's see if we're still in the land of the living. Now, uh, from the shooter's perspective, I wasn't very far away, of course. Uh, certainly rattled the cage a little bit. You're still gonna be uh, having a very rough day, okay? Uh, in terms of the felt energy, okay? There's no such thing as a free lunch in physics, right? That energy has to go somewhere. So just because the bullet is not entering your body doesn't mean that you are still not stopping the energy of that projectile over the entire surface area of this plate. It converts that energy into an area that is over the entire surface area instead of it just passing through your freaking body. Okay. Uh, okay. Interesting result. Interesting result. Okay. So you're certainly going to feel that, guys. Okay. It didn't pass through. It stopped it but it sure did rip the back of the armor out pretty hard. You can feel a discernible bump in there. So it stopped the projectile, it caught him. There is no escaping of those projectiles, but you can see they did push through a considerable amount of energy and rip into that. You probably have you a pretty mean little strawberry, 
probably still break a rib. Okay, you're still going to have some, you're still going to be hurting. You're going to be sucking wind, but you're going to be alive. Uh, but that is the price you kind of pay there uh, to have the luxury of such lightweight armor, right? Again, there's no such thing as a free, free lunch in physics. With a hard plate, it's going to definitely not deform quite as much as that soft armor is going to do but it's also a lot heavier, so it's a trade-off. If you want something more concealable and lightweight, this is gonna be a great option, but just understand that uh, it's, it's, it's still gonna hurt. Now, we're gonna step up the speed, all right? We're getting into a 62 grain projectile out of a 20 inch barrel. This is a uh, Brownells uh, BRN601 uh, with a 20 inch barrel, so this is definitely a, a, a fair amount of velocity that we're getting out of this rifle with this projectile. This is Lithuanian Triple G SS109, at full military speeds. So this is a, a very good test. Again, we're 10 feet away. I'm gonna do two shots, uh, and we're gonna test and see if it would stop this threat, and then we're gonna step up to 55. The 55 is moving pretty fast. It's a dangerous threat at close distance. All right, here's our 62 grain ammunition. <laughs> we're close. Danger close, boys and girls. All right, here we go. All right, now, this was a very interesting location that I chose here. This is really going to be testing this ammunition because we are relatively close to the edge. I did that on purpose because I wanted to see how tough it would be near the edge. But we put our quadrants on there just like we wanted to. Let's go have a look. Okay, look, I'm going to be honest. I have my doubts. Seriously, have my doubts. After seeing the M67, there's a bit of that back deformation on the plate. Did it stop the uh, 62 grain SS-109 out of a 20 inch barrel from 10 feet? Are you still alive, buddy? Let's see. All right, we're gonna pull the armor off and have a look. It looks like it mushroomed it out pretty good, but did it make it through? Now remember, that is a, it's the, the Triple G, the Lithuanian uh, SS-109 is an unpainted green tip. Uh, so the, the, the nose of those projectiles, it is SS-109, it's just not painted, and that is a Lithuanian specification for their military. So, but don't worry, it is full spec, triple G. Arguably some of the best SS-109 on the market, don't tell anyone. All right, ready? Here we go. All right, buddy, are you with us? Ha! Huh. This, he is with the land of the living, boys and girls. Now he is in a lot of pain. Let's, let's pull the plate out of the carrier completely. I want to really get a closer look. Okay, so I want to see how much of this thing ate itself here. All right, so, wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. So a little bit of back face deformation, but it did not make it through. So th this guy lived to fight another day. And it's weird to see that that M67 ball actually made a worse back, uh, back deformation than the lighter projectile that was moving faster. So it's crazy what that mass will do trying to carry through the plate. So we're gonna go ahead and step up to the 55s and go ahead and put them right here. Let's do it. Now, um, I don't have any military 55 grain ammunition, but I do have some Norma uh, 55 grain ammo and the speeds that it's loaded to are precisely the same speeds um, that the military rounds are loaded to. So this is the closest thing that I've got available. Um, so we're gonna test it. Again, 20 inch barrel, uh, BRN601. Oh, look at that. We got a round in the chamber now because I smacked it a little hard, that's okay. All right, 10 feet, here we go. Nice little quadrant right there. Let's go have a look. Okay, I haven't looked. I promise. Let's, uh, let's find out together. Did you survive, buddy? Let's have a look. One day, this poor dummy's gonna get retired. We're gonna put him in a shop somewhere with all these holes in him. He's gonna get live out the rest of his days without getting shot at. Probably not. But, all right, let's have a look. Okay. Are you alive, buddy? Tell me. Well, today's his lucky day. Look at that. The rounds did not make it through. And wow, it's crazy that the faster the projectile and the lighter the weight of the projectile, the less back deformation we got on the plate, which is oddly 
almost the opposite effect that was achieved. I thought that the heavier projectiles would possibly not have the speed to get through the plate and maybe they wouldn't you know have as much back deformation on the back of the uh, of the plate but it turns out the heavier mass regardless of the speed that mass tends to want to carry through so that's why when you start looking at rifle projectiles the heavier projectiles penetrate better okay they may not penetrate certain things as we quite clearly see but they do tend to carry their weight for longer and have more of a straight line penetration through uh, certain targets. Interesting point. You know, that M67 ball, pretty good little, little round, right, for close in type of stuff. Okay, let's check out the plate itself. I'm gonna pull it out here. All right, and this is just to give us a good verifiable result. All right, there's our two uh, 55 grain shots there and a little bit of back deformation, and oddly enough, the least amount of actual damage on the covering of the plate, okay? And we saw the M67 gave us the worst damage with the 62 grain kind of somewhere in between the 55 and the M67. That's a really interesting result. Now, granted, the way that we performed this test wasn't the same as the way they certified it, but I've got an idea. All right, we're not done. We're gonna throw one last thing at this plate just for fun. I don't expect it to survive, but for fun, we're gonna do it anyway because we can. Okay, probably a worst case scenario right here. If uh, Pablo Escobar sends a motorcycle gang of bears to come get you, this is probably the type of thing you're gonna run into. Uh, here we got a CMMG Mutant loaded up with a 30 round magazine. And uh, this one's a machine gun, so here we go. <laughs> All right, sorry, buddy. Here we go. Okay. Did any of that make it through? <laughs> wow. Now, look, guys. This has certainly exceeded the testing parameters for this armor, okay? So let's have a little bit of an open mind going into this, shall we? Well, we were moving the table to do this shot and I found this expanded projectile right here behind him. So uh, I've got a feeling probably didn't end too well from a holistic standpoint, but be that as it may, here we are. Buddy, you don't smell too good. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look. Well, I can see already <laughs> just uh, in taking the carrier off that some of the straps have got bullet holes in them. So. I think some of our rounds made it through, which we knew that. Let's have a look. Okay. I uh, had a few rounds make it through. To be fair though, it looks like maybe a few that are near the edge. We've got a few shots through the wood here. So there's definitely uh, some holes that shouldn't be there. So I've got a feeling that... <sighs> yeah, buddy. Oh, dude. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> uh, I think the survivability of the uh, Mark 47 would probably be questionable at best. Uh, yeah, and that's that mass right there poking out. It's real hot. So I guess it's probably built up full of lead. You can kind of feel some of the uh, cores in there and everything. So we did have a few rounds get through, but uh, it did stop some of them though. I mean, there's not a whole lot of spots where we look from the front to the back. I mean, a lot of those rounds made it over here to the left and not all of them made it through. I mean, it did damage it quite a bit. You can feel those projectiles in there. I can feel a bunch of them. Okay, so it stopped several of those projectiles, but of course, we know that that testing is pretty much outside of the bounds of what this armor is expected to do. But nonetheless, still a really fun concept. Guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got many more videos on the way, more body armor tests and things like that. Is there something you wanna see? Is there a certain gun that you wanna see shot at body armor just because? It doesn't have to be a reason. Just because you wanna see it, let me know. Maybe we can accommodate it for you. Thank you so much. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.